Looks for Lingard and now finding Schick who's broken through. Big chance for him. And that's a solid finish off the crossbar. Oh, Patrick Schick. This is our chance to win this game. Patrick Schick goes for goal and he's done it. 92nd minute of the game. Dimitri Payet, the man who was just unreal for West Ham for that one season. Could we actually consider bringing him back to West Ham? Well, we'll talk about this today. Not just that, guys. Look at the games we've got. Spurs away, Everton, Manchester United. It's going to be a cracking episode. Wow, so both Spurs and Man United, who we play in this episode, are above us in first and second. That's going to make things difficult. Last episode, we wrapped up the transfer window. I'm, look, I'm very happy with what we have here. Firpo, Martinez, Schick, all just really nice players. The team is looking nice. And this episode is going to be a cracker. We've got so much going on. Youth Academy stuff we should be getting to know more about. Of course, Dimitri Payet, we're going to talk about him and all the Premier League actions. So if you're enjoying the West Ham career mode, keep the support coming in, man. Let's try and hit 8,000 likes again. Why not? We'll shoot for that as well. Subscribe for daily FIFA career mode content. Let's get this one underway. Press conference. First up, you need to start considering a keeper as Fabianski is aging. Truer words have never been spoken. We, we kind of like talked about this topic in the last episode. Fabianski being 35 is something I really didn't look at. And guess what? We're in desperate need of a new keeper. The problem is we don't have much fun, so I can't sign a proper good keeper in January. But next season, this is going to be one of the most important positions for us to focus on and improve upon so you know what in the comment section i want to see you guys comment one keeper you think we should try and sign Let, you know what everybody just do that right now in the comment section one keeper that you guys think we need to sign with west ham next up what about signing west ham legend payet now wow but first question, would you consider Dimitri Payet a West Ham legend? He was only there for a brief period, I'd say. But to be fair, that, that season that he had was as good as any West Ham player has ever had in, in like ages. So there's that. But in career mode, Dimitri Payet being 33 and 80 rated and being at Man City, I'm not too sure if it's a smart signing for us to make. But let me know in the comment section, maybe if we do like a swap deal with Lanzini or someone like that involved. Because I definitely want to have a bit of fun in this career mode and Payet and his free kicks is a lot of fun. Let me know what you think about this. Dimitri Payet back to West Ham in this series. If we can get him for like a super cheap deal, I honestly wouldn't mind for squad depth purposes and the occasional free kick here and there. Could be a lot of fun. Next up, try to sign Adam Loz. I can't even pronounce these names. He's also from Czech Republic, and he's one of the most high potential young players in the game. 18 years old. This this kid does look like he's got a lot of talent. Maybe he's already like the next Patrick Schick. I don't know, but he's playing for Spart uh, Sparta Praha right now. We're not in desperate need for a striker and we're lacking funds right now. So I wouldn't really look into this transfer in the immediate future. But in this episode, we'll scout him, get to know more about him in the future. Maybe once we sell Antonio, he could be back up for Sheik or something like that. We'll see though. We'll definitely scout him and get to know more about him. Antonio had an incredible last episode. For the first time in this series, we gave him a chance. And guess what? He, he repaid that faith, scoring a brace and that two quality goals. We played him in like a left strike it all worked out wonderfully Schick was superb as well in that last episode but just the fact that we haven't given Antonio a chance yet he comes in in a game and ends up scoring a brace I think we got to give him that one and hence why he is your player of the episode in other news we have our first monthly scouting report let's see who we oh Louis Field 70 to 94 potential 400,000 only as the valuation is not good but we'll give him a chance by signing him up. The rest are pretty tragic. Yeah, his base overall is pretty low. I'm not too sure what to think about him. Um, I guess we'll just keep him in the academy for now. I think it's definitely time to invest in another scout. Oh, these are expensive, guys. We'll go for the man from Iceland. Why not? Three million. Ah, that's a lot of money. But you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm committing. I kind of want to try 
and bring in players from hey you know what czech republic let's try this out guys for three months and see if we can get some talents from czech republic why the hell not especially since it's a bit of a theme here at west ham some different talents let's see if it's possible for now though we've got a big game in the prem against spurs and we're in good form right now we managed to beat who was the team that we faced in that last episode, the third game? It was it was a crazy game of FIFA. Yeah, Wolves it was. We scored a 98th minute winner to win that one. So we're in good form. Back-to-back -back wins already in the Prem lately. So hopefully against Spurs, we can get it done. Lineups wise, I'm not really looking to make that many changes. I'm just sticking to my strongest team. Considering to play Antonio, but with the way Spurs have lined up, I kind of feel like I want to stick with Ben Rama. So that's my team. Spurs is always looking great. Have they signed? They've signed Joe Gomez. Fair play. Let's get into it. History beckons competition record. Projected goals 37 for Harry Kane. Yo, I'm pretty sure Patrick Schick is the top scorer right now. So he's probably got a better chance of breaking the record. But Kane versus Schick is going to be a nice battle here. We definitely need to give Patrick Schick a better kit number. I'm thinking we give him number 9. You know what, we might just do that after this game. Okay, this is not a good sign. Jesse Lingard has picked up an injury. Problems for us. Let's hope it's nothing serious. I honestly love having a midfield of Declan Rice and Thomas Suchek. It's just so effective, guys, honestly. As he has Lingard on the ball. I'm going to try one from distance. Jesse Lingard, what? No way. He deserved to dance after that. Oh my god. What if we just witnessed goal of the season contender? No, I think I'm going to definitely say this is going to end up winning goal of the season. Jesse freaking Lingard has just done that. From outside the box, this was about 25, 30 yards out. He caught that one so well. And to do that against the Spurs team that are pretty decent right now, second in the league, outrageous. And well, he picked up a knock earlier on in the game. But after that, you know what? I'm keeping him on the pitch sensational from Lingard wow I'm amazed I'm honestly amazed how on earth has he pulled that off that's his first of the season and what a banger it was and by the way after that goal look at this Lingard isn't um injured anymore I think he's walked that one off maybe all the adrenaline from like celebrating after scoring a screamer has you know got him out of the injury so well that's nice for us there goes Bowen on the attack now well we've caught them out by surprise as here's Bowen looking to maybe cross it in can't but we keep it and I'm gonna go backwards here for our right back Kufal Suchek now Declan Rice maybe from distance strikes it well this time Hugo Lloris with the save long shots on next gen FIFA actually are pretty effective as evidently we've just seen with Jesse Lingard. So I'm going to start giving them a go here and there. Now Spurs are definitely building an opportunity with Harry Kane. Declan Rice with a very risky challenge. But I think he got a bit of the ball. And no penalty for that. Declan Rice again looks for Jesse Lingard here. There's the roulette. And he gets taken down. Referee! Pretty sure Regulon didn't get the ball there. That, that was a foul. 100%. Wigman Son inside for Kane. Son and now Spurs with space to attack into. Regulon could cross it in. I don't think he's going to do so. Back for Delaney. Son. Lingard gets taken out there. I go sliding in. Unnecessary. That was so unnecessary for me. And that's the second time this season we've had Diop concede a penalty. Usually defending aggressively works for me. But in this instance, although I think... Yeah, I didn't get the ball. This one doesn't even need a VAR check. This was... Clear-cut penalty. Harry Kane up against Fabianski. Will Kane score? Are we going to save this? That was as perfect as a penalty gets. Bottom left corner. No keeper stopping that. 1-1 one, one against Spurs. Oh, Lingard's on a bit of a run here. Brilliant dribbling from him. He's gone all the way. Jesse Lingard brings it inside. Can't shoot. Schick on the rebound. That was one hell of a run, though, from Lingard. I respect it, man. This is probably the first time I've seen him, like play this well he is commanding and making incredible runs through the midfield as I go again aggressively with Diop I don't know why I keep doing it I really should be more balanced with my approach while defending with Diop because I feel like he's got that mistake in him Hoiberg oh that's a good pass for Lucas Mora keeps it in somehow I'm trying to track with Junior Firpo that's good defending one thing I've noticed Junior Firpo is really solid in his 1v1 battles as he well, miss, makes a mistake there, but he recovers so well. Harry Kane now. Chance for Spurs. This is superbly done. 
fair enough. Can't complain about that. That was so well played from Spurs. The build-up play from the pass from Kane, it was it was class. It was class apart and Deli Ali is the man to score. Spurs get the lead for the first time in this one. With a goal down, it's 2-1. But I still believe we can get something out of this. Ball to the far post and the header. We managed to win it off the post. Rebound someone. Oh, it's gone in. Yo, the chaos and it's worked in our favor. Right place, right time. Schick as always. I don't know how Ben Rama managed to win the header. It was outrageous. What a cross from Lingard. It hit the post. Schick missed the first attempt, but the second time, everybody was on the floor. Um, Eric Dyer wasn't in a good spot, and Schick was calm, composed. Just had to knot that one over, and well, we've equalized against Spurs. A chaotic goal, but we'll take it. Oh, that's that's a good ball, and now it's a chance for Hoiberg. Oh, come on. Spurs' chance creation in this game has just been unreal. Like, they're walking through our defense like it's not even existing. Like, fair enough, I guess. Hoiberg with the goal. Spurs make it 3-2. But as I said before, I feel like there is more goals in this game. Crazy to say that considering the scoreline is 3-2. But that's that's just how this game has been. It's been crazy against Spurs. Let's push for an equalizer. Come on. Kyung Min Son with a ton of pace. Goes backwards though for Regulon. Now Delaney. Deli Ali, that's a good challenge from Lisandro Martinez. Kane still has it. We can't let Spurs score another one because if they do make it 4-2, yep, that's any hope of getting a point out of this completely gone. Lisandro Martinez with a good challenge right there. Lucas Mora with pace right at the end of the game. I think he's just going to stay in the corner, waste a bit of time. Can't complain, to be honest, because it's been that hectic of a game. I'm pretty sure Spurs don't want to give away another chance. I think the ref's going to blow the whistle any time. Let's not let them score another goal here. Diop does well. We get the ball away, but that's it. Full time. We fought hard, guys. That's something we need to give ourselves a bit of credit for. Spurs were just brilliant. And I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't win or get a draw from this because this will kind of overshadow that incredible goal Jesse Lingard scored. So... Yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. Now, we have dropped outside the top four because of that defeat to Spurs. And they're currently in the fight with Man United for the title. It is what it is, though. But we now play Everton, who aren't having the best of seasons. They're 13th in the league. We need to win this. Yo, James Rodriguez is going to be starting for Everton in this one. That should definitely make things interesting. They've got Calvert-Lewin, Alan. Yo, Everton have a good team. They should be finishing way higher than 13th. But oh well, I'm making some big changes. I feel like in a game like this, I kind of want Antonio on the pitch making those runs. And that's why he starts ahead of Ben Rama in that left striker role that he worked so well from in that last episode. So that's how we're lining up for this. Got to get back to winning ways in this one, guys. That game against Spurs, we put up a good fight. But ultimately, we walked away with nothing. We're outside the top four. I really feel with the way things are going, maybe top four might be a possibility. But of course, it's a long shot. So we just got to keep ourselves in that conversation for as long as possible. Oh, here we go. Look at the space we've got here for Jared Bowen. If he can get ahead of his man, Luca Digne was solid defensively there. Oh, that's a good ball for Bernard with the header. What? The, the smallest player on the pitch has managed to score a header against us. Like what? Wow. Wow. Also, a quick fact, I'm pretty sure in that last game against Spurs was one of the first times we've actually scored the first goal in a game. Pretty sure, guys, pretty sure. And we're back to now conceding first. <laughs> there you go. Everton with the goal. And yeah, the fight back begins already. Oh, Schick, that, he took that one in his stride really well as he brings it inside. Schick, difficult angle. Got a lot of power behind it, but it, it, the block was decent. Lingard now. Ah, oh, that's good play from Andre Gomez. Sushek. Very strong right there. Oh, he gets it back after misplacing that pass. He finds Patrick Schick and this could lead to something. Bringing it inside, but options are limited. There was li little I could do there. And Everton defending really well in this game. Declan Rice looks for Patrick Schick. Turns his man brilliantly. Has to score. No way has the keeper saved that. Jordan Pickford. Well, there's a reason why he starts for England, I guess. That was outrageous. Schick turned his man so well there. And we deserved a bit more from that. Come on. Half time. Backs against the wall for the second half. We're definitely looking like the better team. But in the final third, we're not getting that clinical finishing that we normally get from Schick. James. Oh, he's managed to go through that defense so easily. And Fabianski cannot make a save to save his life. Dunal up, Everton. This is not going well. Is that going to be back-to-back -back defeats for us in the Premier League? 
Wow, man, we're 2-0 down with, well, just 40 minutes to go. We'll need something outrageous. Now, we've done it before. We've made comebacks, but we can't do it every time. I, I hate to be in a situation like this. Lingard getting the first goal of this game as early as possible is what is going to be very important. Kufal looking for that ball for Schick. Rob Holding was there. I, I saw the run Schick made, and that's why I went for the ball in. But it didn't really work out. We still have it, though. Declan Rice looks for Schick now. Space to shoot. Oh, he got that one so well. But, of course, Pickford makes the save. We have it with Antonio. He's... Oh, come on. Oh, that's a penalty. Let's go. For once, we get a decision go in our favor. It's a penalty. Uh, relief. Relief, guys. But we need to still score this. Let's take a look at the replayer. Did Coleman get a bit of the ball? No, he didn't. Clear as day. Who is the best penalty taker in the team? Antonio, I think. You know what? We got to take this with Lingard. Because for the objective, guys. I'm taking this penalty with Lingard. Hopefully it goes top bins. That's, that's decent. Decent penalty from Jesse Lingard. Giving us a bit of hope. Go collect the ball, my guy. Collect the ball, dude. Doesn't want to do it. But anyways, we're, we're back in the game. We're back in the battle for this one. It's only 2-1. Okay, this is where we can really cause problems, Lingard. Ah, uh, Antonio, you got to keep yourself on. Wait, wait, he was onside. I thought he was offside. Ah, uh, you should always play to the whistle. That's what that teaches you. Antonio, sliding this one for Schick. Massive chance. He's got to score this. No, 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 no. I can't believe it. Schick is missed from there. This never happens. How? Unreal. I think we all can agree that that would normally be considered a sure shot goal, especially with the kind of form Schick's been in. Unreal. How have we not equalized in this game? I am genuinely in disbelief after that. Unreal. There's still time left, but that was our golden chance of getting at least a point from this. Oh, that's a good cross in. There's nothing you can do about it. That cross, when that ball came in, you just knew somebody was going to attack it. And yeah. And look at the way Everton's celebrating as well. Fair enough. Fair freaking enough. Uh, we had our chance to get a point out of this. And Patrick Schick, I don't know how he's missed that. He normally never misses those. And well, yeah, it is 3-1. Um, Everton taking home all three. Another good cross for Richarlison. The... Well, there you have it, guys. Full time. Everton managed to beat us 3-1. Frustrating result. But games like this... Just make me realize what are we missing and in, in this team and let's talk about it. As I said, games like this is where you realize your team is missing something. I, I feel like the fact that our midfield is, is like it's got two CDMs and then one attacking midfielder. We don't have that controller in midfield who can help retain possession. And that's where I feel we're losing out against teams like Spurs. I don't have a player who can help me keep the ball, spread it out wide. Lingard is the kind of player you give the ball, you run with forward and maybe look for the final pass. So I'm feeling that's where we're li uh, lacking. And eventually in this series, I want to move to like a 4-3-3 with one CDM and a couple of midfielders who can control the game. But let me know what you think, guys. Where do you think we're lacking in this team? Because clearly in the recent few games, uh, you know, we've been exposed a bit in midfield and... Yeah, we're conceding a fair few goals, stupidly as well. Early on in the episode, we spoke about Adam Lojek. I think that's how you say his name. I'm not too sure. He looks pretty good for his stats, man. Honestly, 75 rated, but some of his stats already look pretty amazing. He'll cost about 12 million. You know what? We might be able to afford this in January, but do we even need him with Antonio? Maybe, guys, we can sell Antonio for a decent amount and we can sign this guy to be back up for Patrick Schick. Something like that we can maybe figure out. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Okay, so up next, we've got Southampton and they're doing fairly well. We're seventh right now in the Prem. We've dropped off a fair bit in this episode. We need a win, guys. We've got to get at least a single win in this episode, guys. Like, come on. This is how I've got my team set up for this one. Southampton, West Ham, enough of the silly results. We need a win here. Hilariously enough, in this series, our form away from home has been much better than at home. I don't know why, but it's just been the case. So we're playing away against Southampton. We've lost our last two games. We need to get back to winning ways here. Declan Rice. That's a good ball for Jared Bowen. Go on. First touch was nice. Looks to bring it inwards. Thomas Suchek as he tries to find Benarama. Is he onside? Ah, he's offside. He got that one under control well, but he couldn't keep himself on. Ward Prowse, that's a very smart ball for Danny Ings, and he catches that one so well. Incredible from Danny Ings. By the way, if you guys didn't realize, he's the second top scorer in the Premier League right now. 
Once again, we end up conceding the first goal. This is this is getting up to being a pattern now. Huh. Are we going to end up losing three games in a row? Nah, man, we can't allow that. We need to win this. Remember, guys, if we don't finish top seven in the Premier League, we got to release our highest rated player. Uh, or basically sell him. That's not going to happen here. Here we go. Schick now. Good run from him. Brings it inside. Ah, oh, his right foot always letting him down. Good defending from Southampton as well. I would love to maybe score off a corner. It just never happens for me. Oh, we still have it though. Good chance. Ah, oh, come on. Chaos there, but Southampton survive it. Here we go, Lingard. Benarama, he's just about kept himself on, I think. I should have just gone for goal or something. No way, dude. I should have just gone for goal with Ben Rama. I wasn't confident with him. Huh, I'm second guessing my decisions in the final third. That's because our form has been terrible and it's costing us right now. But hopefully now Junior Fitpo making a good run. Backwards for Declan. Now Jesse Lingard. Oh, I thought I might have got that one through, but no, I haven't. We, we still have a chance here though. Lingard skips past one. Superbly done. I'm going to go for goal. Jesse Lingard keeper makes a good save. Nothing's working for me in this episode, man. When Rama puts this one in. Oh, come on. It just never works, does it? The op. Back for Thomas Sushek. We're going to try and create something as Lingard. Lingard brings it inside. He's got to score this off the post. You can't write this stuff. You really can't. Jesse Lingard off the post from there. Wow. Declan Rice sliding this one for Patrick Schick. And this is a big moment in the game. Patrick Schick. Difficult angle, but he normally scores these. And he's missed it again. When something doesn't work for you, the, the, uh, how do I even describe the situation? Nothing's working for me. Half time, we've had an ample amount of opportunities. We haven't been able to take any of them. Oh, Sushek. Laying this one off for Schick. He's got to score this. Finally, guys. Finally, Patrick Schick scores. We got this gifted from Southampton. Literally, they lost the ball to Sushek in, in a very terrible place. Just laid it off for Schick. And thankfully, this time he found the back. And then it's been a while, it feels like, since we've had Schick score. I mean, yeah, he scored in the first game today, but you know what I mean. But good finish right there. He had to score from there. He really had to. That's, I think, his goal number 10 for him in the Prem. Good to see, but the job's not done yet. We need three points today. Shake, and I see Declan Rice making a good run. Southampton completely opened up. What a chance for Declan Rice. He's hit that straight at the keeper. Like, what was that? I was aiming towards the far right corner. Like, please, man. Th that's exactly why you shouldn't shoot with players like Declan Rice. Honestly, here we go, Junior Firpo. Looks inside for Lingard. Releasing this one for Sushek. That's superbly done to find Jared Bowen. He's got to score this. You know what? In an episode... What have I just done? I thought Sheik was empty. That is potentially the worst miss I could have ever had. That was a clear-cut goal from Bowen. And I am completely messed it up. As I said, I'm second-guessing every decision. And it's genuinely costing me. Sushek. Now it is Bowen. We can't miss this chance. We can't miss this. A cross in at the far post. Ben Rama doesn't win that. What am I even doing? Okay, Jesse Lingard has picked up a bit of a knock, but I think he's going to still continue as we find Ben Rama. Difficult angle. Off the crossbar. How many times? Wait, are we going to get a penalty for what? I think we are. That is a lifeline. That is genuinely a lifeline. No, it's not a penalty. It's, a, it's an earlier foul for something. Oh my God, I thought we were going to get a penalty. Also... Lingard's knock hasn't gone away. This time I'm thinking we bring on Manuel Lanzini. Yeah, we'll do that, guys. He's losing a lot of stats, though, but okay, we'll do it. Schick, we got to score from this. It's Bowen. This has to be a goal. Oh, Bowen or Bowen. However you want to say his name, he's put it in the back of the net. Huh, what a relief. Honestly, what a relief. We were playing, like, in terms of creating chances so well, in terms of finishing chances, it's been an absolute nightmare. Finally, Bowen gets the opportunity, does not make a mistake this time. I don't second guess, I go for the finesse shot. Works, we're 2-1 up. Let's just wrap this game up, guys. We need three points and that's all. It's been absolutely awful in front of goal, but yeah. We've, we're somehow leading the game. Let's go. There you have it, guys. Full time. West Ham beat Southampton, but this was difficult. Not in terms of, like, creating chances. We did that plentiful, but we weren't just clinical. But ultimately, we got through... And yeah, it's it's a three points for us, which we desperately needed. Bowen had a good game. And well, there you go. The bad luck begins. Lingard will be out for the next four weeks. I think what I might do in his absence is play Ben Rama at Cam and have Antonio start on the left side. 
that might be the play until Lingard recovers from his injury. And it's a real shame. Lingard was finally getting into a bit of form for us because if you look at his stats, two goals and three assists in nine games isn't all too bad for here. The injury is going to slow things down for him a fair bit. Look at our next couple of games in the Premier League, guys. It's Man United and Chelsea. Next episode, we got some big boy games. We're up to fifth in the Premier League again. It's been a tough episode losing the first two games. And guess what? Next episode, Man United and Chelsea back to back. That's not going to be fun. Late of the episode wise, I'm a bit confused. Um, Who do we go for? Bowen had a good one. Sushek, I thought in midfield, was monstrous in this episode. Can't go for Schick with the amount of opportunities he wasted. Probably between Sushek and Bowen. Let me know what you think in the comments. For now though, this is where we're wrapping things up. Another solid episode. Not in terms of on the pitch performances, but off the field. We're getting to know more about this team, the setup and all. So that's great. Next episode will fire through probably the months of October, the remainder of it, and November as well. We'll be soon in December, so we're progressing smoothly. So if you're enjoying the West Ham career mode, keep the support coming in. Drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.